Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to another episode of Sea Salt Snippets. It's been a little while since I last gave you guys a Sea Salt Snippets video, but today we do have some very interesting topics to go over. So, for the very first topic today, we've actually got a Final Fantasy 15 topic and uh, this is actually something that a lot of people have been talking about over the past couple of days because there is a rumor going around that Final Fantasy 15's release date has actually been changed to November 29th. Now as most of you guys know who do follow Final Fantasy 15, there was a huge uncovered event earlier this year held in LA and it served as a massive Final Fantasy fan event leaning towards of course Final Fantasy 15 revealing all sorts of different things and of course at the end of that event the release date was revealed to release on the 30th of September worldwide so uh, as of right now it is August next month is September so it's really not too long away and a lot of fans are getting extremely excited for the game but this rumor has been floating around that indeed the game is actually being delayed until November 29th. Now Square Enix have not come out and said anything towards this, but there is some sort of like photographic evidence towards this. So I'm just gonna be going over the rumor, just kind of letting you guys know in case you don't. So uh, this comes out of Game Nijia, and this is what they said. Yesterday we reported that Final Fantasy 15 has been delayed to November 29th. This information came from a trusted source within GameStop management who has accurately leaked several stories in the past, including the release date and trade and, de uh, trade and deals for new 3DS uh, as well as the release date for Star Wars Battlefront. This report was also corroborated by the Gematsu source that leaked the game's original release date of September 30th, but neither of us could initially provide images of the promotional material. Thankfully, I have since uh, been able to acquire an image of the instructions that accompanied the new date and you can view below. Following the release of our initial report, many GameStop employees and concerned readers contacted me to note their story's promotional materials still cited as September 30th release date. It's true that GameStop stores were very recently sent materials with that date, but the date has apparently been changed since those materials were printed and shipped. As a result, the old materials will still be used, but stickers with the new date are being sent to GameStop stores to cover up the old date. The new date is planned to go on display on Monday, August 15th, so an official announcement will likely come then, if not sooner. And this image, as you guys can see right here, is actually instructions from Square Enix to say, like, uh, you know, we are sending you these stickers to put on the promotional materials inside the GameStop stores. So once you get the stickers, put it over the old release date to display the new release date. As of right now, it is a rumor, but it looks like it is actually true. A lot of retailers are still uh, displaying Final Fantasy 15 to release on, um, you know, September 30th. But for the meantime, don't take this as absolute concrete 100%, but it is looking like it is actually true. Like uh, Gamnesia said right here, you know, uh, it's likely that Square Enix will actually come out with an announcement very shortly um, to basically say, yes, uh, Final Fantasy 15 is delayed until November 29th. Now, exactly why the game's delayed, who really knows? It's going to be interesting to see if Square Enix actually give us an explanation towards this. Perhaps maybe they need just a little bit more time to finish polishing up the games. Sometimes this actually does happen with games, it's a sad truth in reality, but if the developers need more time to perfect the game, then we just need to let them do that. Next up today, we actually have the Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep Death Screen. This is a picture of it right here. Now, um, this is actually something that I haven't talked about yet, and I know it's not super, super important, so this is why I threw it into today's episode of Sea Salt Snippets. But uh, most of you guys probably haven't seen this because from a lot of the footage that uh, came out of E3, no one really died in the demo, but um, a few people actually managed to take like some footage of the death screen and a picture of it, and as you guys can see right here, this is it. So it looks like the next generation of Kingdom Hearts is still maintaining the original OG death screen with basically the character floating up against a black screen and the hearts um, obviously floating above. What's really, really cool is the light emitting from that crystal heart uh, above Aqua is actually shining over Aqua. So some really nice sort of lighting effects going on here. One notable thing is uh, the game actually gives you a tip 
down the bottom when you die and I, I imagine that the tip is going to always be different kind of tells you like you know perhaps maybe blizzard is best used with um, thunder or maybe you know keep in mind you should always be dodge rolling or stuff like that it's really really cool to note and it appears like this is probably going to be the way the death screen works in Kingdom Hearts 3 and for the last topic today we have some information towards Yutada Hikaru's brand new album releasing this year on September 28th now in case you guys don't know Yutada Hikaru has done uh, many of the Kingdom Hearts opening theme songs uh, and as you guys know they're absolutely brilliant and I only hope that she returns for Kingdom Hearts 3 to make an absolutely epic opening theme, but she's done stuff like Passion, Haikairi, uh, as well as like Sanctuary, so those songs should be very familiar to you guys. But she took a huge hiatus, uh, she took a huge, huge break, and she announced that uh, this year she was getting back into music, and it kind of raised the spirits of a lot of Kingdom Hearts fans, because a lot of us kind of thought, well, this is great, because Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, is most likely releasing either 2017 or 2018 and if she's getting back into music uh, you know after this long hiatus it gives us hope that she's probably gonna come back for a new Kingdom Hearts installment which will probably be Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, she's actually revealed the title of this new album it's called Phantomy which actually means ghost in French so that's kind of interesting and as you guys can see here there is 11 different songs within the album they all have uh, I believe like Japanese names right there. Um, I cannot pronounce any of those, um, but it's interesting. Do you think that there might actually be a track in here that could possibly be a pairing? Not so much in Kingdom Hearts 3 because I think it's a little bit too early for that, but maybe she's done something for Kingdom Hearts 2.8 for either Back Cover or 0.2 Birth by Sleep. I could be totally wrong. All of these songs in this album might not have anything to do with Kingdom Hearts whatsoever because, of course, she doesn't just do music for Kingdom Hearts, but she does a lot of her own personal music. But I thought I'd let you guys know. However, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode of Sea Salt. So now it's just keeping you guys updated to do with certain things towards Kingdom Hearts or, of course, Final Fantasy. Like I was saying at the start of the video, uh, pretty shortly we'll know whether or not this whole delay thing with Final Fantasy 15 is actually true or not. Currently as of right now we're just sort of waiting for Square Enix to say something publicly to absolutely 100% confirm this rumor so uh, only time will tell. Otherwise guys I've been cynical and until next time I'll catch you guys later. Peace.